Hi, Jeff. How are you doing today? I am doing fabulous this evening. It's, about, it's just about after 9 p.m. here in Seattle. Uh, and here is uh, morning time around 10.30. Okay. And nice Good. to see you after a uh, long time. And, yeah, uh, great to see you. Thanks to be here to share your talk details, uh, uh, which you are going to present in Regional Scrum Gathering, Hyderabad, India, 2019 on 29th and 38th March. And for the right. viewers, yeah. right yeah, now I'm, I'm with yeah. Jeff Lopez, uh, and uh, he's going to present his talk on leading through being and making, how India can help to improve global agility. Jeff, uh, you guide global enterprises to exploit agile fundamentals. And when I met you personally, I got to know that you have been active in Landmark, which is devoted in bringing positive and uh, uh, permanent shifts in quality of life. And um, mm -hmm. also, I can feel that you are deeply connected with India. Mm. Uh, yes. Thank you. So, Thank you. <laughs> so... Now, I'm curious to know that uh, how you got into coaching, what are your achievements, and how your journeys to Landmark and India created a current Jeff. Sure. Thank you. That's a, that's a great question, and I'm sure I could talk for hours all about it, but I'll be brief. Um, so my, my journey um, as a coach actually started years before I knew what Agile or Scrum even was. Um, I, uh, I worked, um, in, uh, really the, the early to the mid two thousands in a professional and training coach and coaching company in the Seattle area that specialized in the realm of nonprofit fundraising for charities. Uh, it's a company called Benavon <laughs> and I was, I was, they were a startup when I joined them. I was their number first technology worker and ended up becoming their, I, I was in senior management, became the director of information systems, but it was led by a woman named Terry Axelrod, who's a master coach. And their, their firm is, is, is in the way they approach coaching is very much built on the work done by Landmark Education. If you're listening to this, Landmark Education is a global, uh, global educational enterprise that's really focused on personal transformation. Yes. Uh, we, in the Agile space, talk a lot about our enterprise and team transformation, but Landmark Education is really, it's a very large global enterprise that's yes. focused on, on personal transformation. And interestingly enough, um, the the forerunner uh, of what's now known now known as Landmark Worldwide is was it was created in the early 1970s by a gentleman named Werner Earhart, and uh, and at the time it was called Earhart Seminar Training. He grew that into something called the Forum, and then sold that company to a bunch of employees. Um, but but it's interesting to tie back to coaching. If you read the history, uh, if you read a couple, a couple studies of the history of the professional coaching, uh, the professional coaching movement and all these coaching schools, it ties back to Werner Earhart. Uh, if you read a couple of things on the history of coaching, they really see Werner and the work he did in the early 70s as being the father of what's now known as professional coaching. Coactive coaching, which is a very popular certification among the Lenta Agilists, was created. That, that the Coach Training Institute that does that was created by a couple former employees of Werner Earhart. Uh, organizational systems and relationship coaching that formed um, largely out of people that had done that kind of work. So I was fully immersed in uh, the learning of coaching and being coached, which is a really important part of developing yourself as a coach for many years before I ever learned to Agile. And then it was actually in, in a Landmark Education course, this was a global course where people were flying in all over the world, that I really decided it was time to recreate myself. This was in 2007. And um, from that, I actually quit that job and took time off and then was, um, it took time off and six weeks after I quit that job, I was invited to um, interview actually for a business analyst job in this company that practiced and taught Scrum. And uh, it was one of those instances where I walked into the, walked into their headquarters uh, near Seattle 
And it was one of these things where I walked in and my whole life was changed because there were no offices. It was all open space. People working were working in teams, creating together. Um, and this, this was actually a, so what's it, Solutions IQ, which is now a division of Accenture, but they were an independent company back then. They, at the time, they had a large internal development operation. And, um, and I didn't know what they were at the time, but there were burn down monitors and continuous integration monitors running everywhere. And I knew right the instant, this is what I wanted to do. Earlier during the dot-com era, uh, dot com era, I had been a project manager for a large e-commerce consultancy, and that experience made me never want to be a project manager ever again in my life. And so, but this really transformed, transformed my relationship of how people in, in technology and knowledge work could work together and create great stuff. And I got very lucky that they hired me, and that's what started my Scrum journey. And, uh, and so I had been working first as a business analyst and a scrum master, worked for a while as a product owner, and then started coaching and had um, been spending at that point probably about, about, about three years traveling all throughout the United States as a coach, um, largely at the team level. Um, but then I had finished an engagement in Michigan my home state, and I had only been home for 24 hours, and uh, John Rudd, the owner of Solutions IQ at the time, called me up on a Saturday uh, afternoon and said, do you want to go to India? Uh, and my wife, who had been to India for a couple times before we ever met, um, she, uh, she said, yes, I want to have you the experience. And that's what, that's what it became, and that was about five years ago. That was in 2014. Wow. became my first, uh, it was actually my first a first chance coaching in another in another country and um this is just to make of and and i talk a little bit about this journey um i'll be talking in during my talk on hyderabad so i'm going to give you the short version here um which is is you know india affected me immediately in a couple ways one of them was and i'll talk about this during during in hyderabad was that i fe it, i felt and still feel that India is the great fertile ground for practicing Agile on Earth. Um, and so it was just, I was having the level, a level of, of success inside training and coaching organization that I had never experienced. And it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't just me getting, being more experienced as this. It was, it was the fact that this environment in India was so, uh, was so powerful for to learn and practice agility and scrum. The other part was that uh, was the, the, the spirituality and the long history of, of particularly Hindu thought. Um, I, you know, and I really felt that, that and, st and still feel very strongly that our understanding of how to practice what we do in Scrum and Agile in a large organization and in not just a large organization, but in a nation, you're going to learn more about how to do that well by studying the Upanishads and a lot of, a lot of Hindu thought that's been around for 3,000 years rather than studying management theory that's been around for the last maybe 10 or 20 years. Um, that's a strong hunch I had, but it was really, really just affected my life, those two things. Um, you know, the other thing is that... Uh, particularly in India, and in in, if you vi visited India or the Middle East, uh, spirituality flows through everyday life. Uh, not like in the United States where we tend to compartmentalize it on a Sunday. This really flows through everyday life. And so that, those things all kind of converge together to start me off on this journey. And I, I come to India quite frequently um, to coach. I spent three months in, um, in Pune at the end of last year and I'll be coming there for hopefully the next six weeks. I actually spent a, did a little tour of, of speaking and, and doing training earlier this year already. This will be my second trip to the year, India this year already. So those are kind of, that's a, that's, sorry, that was a big long answer, but those are kind of how, how my life is a, at first as a coach and then as an agilist and then coming over to India converged. Um, and you will, if you come to my talk in Hyderabad, you will hear a lot of that. I will draw in a lot of uh, a lot of these influences and tie tie a lot of things together for both the agile world and the world of Indian thought. Wow, wonderful! Okay. Now I can feel that you have a deep uh, understanding of Indian culture and business. Yeah, and uh, as 
you are presenting a talk on leading through being and making and how india can improve uh, in global agility can you share sure. a brief idea about your talk to create interest in uh, regional scrum <laughs> gathering audience absolutely um so the phrase being and making or be and make uh the source of that is swami vivekananda you know who was one of the, one of the great great um great saints who really during the 20th century affected the social transformation of india mm-hmm. and it pointed to but to by gandhi and nehru is saying he he without the foundation he built indian independence would have been way way more difficult than it than it was and um and he i'll tell the story the, the my talk starts out um at a, uh, telling a story of when i went to kanyakumari at the southern tip of india and visited vivekananda rock um and and tell a little bit about his life but he 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 really charged his followers his, their your duty in the world is to be and make and there's a really strong parallel with that um and then i tie that to the agile manifesto and uh and what we do in agility we talk a lot about in agility about being agile and doing agile yes. and, and there's a really you know we're do when we're doing agile we're making things but you can't be successful at that if you're being agile and there's a strong parallel with what vivekananda did but and uh, and what he what he he ended up creating in the form of the ramakrishna order which is a worldwide movement now um so during my talk i tie those two things together i'll also bring in work of christopher alexander who was the originator of uh the concept of pattern languages and also um also talk a little bit about interactions and training i got from jeff sutherland the co-creator of scrum uh, i got to spend time with him Mm-hmm. during a class when i was becoming a scrum at scale trainer last year so i'll tie all these things together and um you know the the, the other thing I'll, i'll share about vivekananda really quickly is that he said something really amazing as i was researching with this is that when he talked about how he worked <coughs> he um he said this and I, i was amazed when i found it he said you know what i don't like to talk about big plans i just make something and i show it to people and then i talk about what i'm what i made which is exactly what we do in scrum. Um yes. and he he was talking about that where he probably said that that phrase something in the early 1900s. Um and so so there's a big, big parallel with this. And the the crux of this is to really, you know, emphasize the 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 simplicity in scrum. Um where there there's so much so much emphasis on learning new frameworks and going to different coaching frameworks and different coaching schools and learning different scaling frameworks but it's the simplicity of developing yourself as someone who can be someone who makes value um and uh that that really if you affect that can affect yourself your team your organization your nation and the world so that's the kind of stuff I'll talk about during during this talk wow i'm yeah. sure it would be exciting and I hope so. <laughs> When I was going through uh, your talk proposal, then I come across your learning objective. Uh, one thing uh, uh, um, was mentioned there that new ways to look uh, at the two values of agile manifesto. So now my mm-hmm. question is that how can create a change in the way uh, a team uh, behaves, team work, and uh, the way the different leaders uh, work to right. create a productive team so how it yeah. can impact in team behaviors one of the things i'll say about this talk is it's a strong strong emphasis on practice and not on learning new practices right mm-hmm. about practicing the fundamentals and getting really good at that because that's where the magic emerges from the ability to create more value not from new dazzling new framework there's no silver bullets Mm-hmm. in this. And so there's a strong emphasis in this. And I tie that back to the first two values of the Agile Manifesto. And if there's there's one thing I'd love to in a way of a, a shift in thinking is to consider those two things an invitation. Not as a rule that sits up on the wall 
or something that you can say you're not you're not practicing individuals and interactions, right? Uh, in the, if you look at that statement, individuals and interactions over processes and tools, mm -hmm. to treat that as an invitation to yes. really yeah. practice and do something differently. And through practicing that, you will, you, you will create change around you in the world by focusing on those, on those two, uh, just on that value. Um, and then working software over comprehensive documentation Mm -hmm. is doing that in relationship to other people, right? Creating value together and doing something that works. Just like Vivekananda said, I don't talk about big plants. I create something and show it to people. This is not, so you can see, this is not a concept that started out with Scrum. Um, so there's a shift is to consider those, instead of rules that we try to govern each other and rule over each other, um, that's an invitation to do something significantly different with how you're behaving in the world. And from that, amazing stuff emerges. Yes, fantastic. And when I uh, join Landmark Forum, and uh, I uh, get a clear idea that uh, when we talk in the form of invitation, it creates a significant impact. Mm. And I, I'm personally yes. observing it. Uh, great. Yeah. yeah. So my last question is that what, uh, are the key takeaways of your talk? If you'd like to share a so, couple of ideas, a couple of key takeaways. Yeah. You know, one of the, first of all, I, I mentioned, for, first of all, is to treat those, treat that, treat, when you look at the, at the values of the manifesto, treat them as an invitation. Don't treat them as a rule to be followed. And from that, um, to great, create yourself a backlog, you know, uh, um, as uh, I don't want to give too much away in my, my talk on Hyderabad, but, but um, when you're being an individual, you're actually getting an action on something in the world, right? You are committing to something larger than yourself, even if it's something personal in your team. So it's, what was interesting is we talk about teams, teams, teams all the time in Agile, but that statement comes out is first we act as individuals, Right. And to, so the, the first takeaway is to get in action on something in, as an individual. But then you really can't be effective in that unless you start adding people. Uh, so the two big takeaways are a different way, treating that, that value as an invitation. And from that, you get in action and you get in action by creating a backlog for yourself. Right. And, and then the other way is you get an action on that backlog by, sh by inviting other people into it and then creating something real out, out of it on a regular basis and learning from that as a process. That's actually a, something I learned before my Agile, Agile years and it's really emerged into what, what I do now, traveling all around the world the way I do. Um, and so I wanna give a window into that experience and, and, and hopefully have people take away so they can launch into their own backlogs and their own way of helping transform the world. Wow, I'm becoming excited to join your talk. And uh, also, <laughs> also, I invite my friends who are going to attend regional scrum gathering, if you would like to exploit that, how India can help in improving global agility, come and join Jeff's uh, talk in regional scrum gathering, Hyderabad, India 2019 on 29th and 30th March. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Lopez, for, thanks, uh, Jeff, uh, for, Thank you. <laughs> sorry. Thanks uh, uh, okay. to be here to sh share your talk details. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, all welcome.